Hello everyone, welcome back to episode 9 of our Feed the Beast Neotech series. Today guys, I want to jump right into things, and as you see, I've gone ahead and done a small bit of off-camera work, not too much, other than obviously making a bunch more drills and letting them run in the background, as you see by our 136,000 copper and plenty of other resources. Other than that, I've just set up our biodiesel again. I had this set up before upstairs when I had the previous episode recorded and then edited it down, obviously. But yeah, I haven't actually done anything with the machine, like I haven't connected all the pipes. For now, we're going to be voiding biodiesel. Its only use is for for boosted diesel which is nice and all and then for fluid fuels for diesel generators however i don't have diesel generators at the moment and i'm not about to make another thousand tanks to store all these fluids so right now we're just going to avoid it not a big deal we already have how much is this yeah fifty-seven thousand buckets of or 5.7 thousand buckets of diesel so i'm not too worried about diesel and then the ethanol itself is going to go in these chemical reactors which i've locked the recipe for and this is pretty easy to do so say the sulfuric acid which is we're after i do just double click it and it will lock to any chemical reactor so for this guy i wanted ethanol so you just double click it and ethanol gets locked in which is super nice now I'm going to be using ethylene and sulfuric acid, mainly the sulfuric acid in this episode. Ethylene will be for once we progress to the HV age for making circuitry. However, the sulfuric acid itself is what we need to make manganese sulfuric solution. So if you remember, we made a bit of manganese using raw iron, which gives you eight iron dust and manganese crushed dust. So this guy will be used for the manganese tiny dust, which turns into manganese, which will be mixed for stainless steel. And we need iron dust and manganese and then a bit of nickel, but we also need chromium dust. Chromium dust comes from chromium hydrochloric solution, which is hydrogen and chlorine. Hydrogen's pretty easy. You just have to electrolyze some water. You get hydrogen and oxygen. 2 hydrogen, 1 oxygen, H2O, right? And then chlorine, very similar. So you electrolyze some salt, you get sodium, Na, you get chlorine, Cl, salt, NaCl, right? So it, this is just a chemistry lesson at this point. But with the sodium, we can make sodium batteries for this age, which is super useful. This will allow us to do HV progress. And I'm pretty sure this is it actually, yeah. They're only used for HVH. However, once we get to HVH, we'll be able to make turbo machine hulls and stuff with the sodium. So we're going to keep that. And then ethylene, like I said, will be made for circuitry. We make it into polyethylene and then we can get into circuitry. Also allows us to make upgrades to overclock our machines a bit faster. However, I need to hook these guys up to power so that they actually work. And then we need to make a few more tanks as usual so we can add it up i did add an elevator here i had 200 pearls and this goes right up to our top floor so i still will be jumping off of our cliff to get to these also oh i didn't show this off let's hop down i added eight more coke ovens i've also framed them so they look a lot nicer and yeah i really like the look of this i'm not gonna lie i like how they're framed and we needed more coke ovens because this guy ran out of fuel while i was offline like well afk and i came back and the steam tank was empty and i had no power so that was an issue speaking of power may as well fill up my drill but yeah we're should be plenty fine on power now i have 7800 charcoal and it's not going down it should go up but yeah these guys are all working in parallel which is super nice and then i also have access hatches on both sides just so we can access all the pipes and stuff and then just close the door super nice and then we also have one on this side as well and i still kept the ladder here but i won't be using it much also i've been cooking up all of our aluminum so i just have an export bus putting all the aluminum in here it gets processed and then it gets taken out so all the aluminum dust we get from our box that down below has been processed 19,000 plus I put 2,000 plates or 2,000 ingots in here, and I processed 2,000 plates worth of aluminum as well, just so we can get a head start on today and not have to worry about things as much. So there's a few machines we need, so I'm just going to start crafting them up. We have plenty of aluminum plates, as you saw, and we should have everything in here. As you see, we have 142,000 copper. I might be missing a few bronze for some of these machines. However, I did cook a bunch more up. I have bronze down here and some electrum as well, so we should be fine. It's crafting time. Okay, hey, that should be everything. It should be four electrolyzers and two chemical reactors, unless I've completely done my math wrong. And then obviously we'll need a mixer to make the stainless steel itself. However, I'll just bring that up here and use my mixer right here for that for now. I was making some more battery alloy plates. And yeah, everything should be good. We'll see. So let's just grab some pipes. My fluid pipe, item pipe, just in case. 
and a different kind of fluid pipe and a different kind of fluid pipe why not now do i have any tanks left yes i have seven tanks two tank hatches and some steel casings oh you know what i should get some i just crafted a bunch of these i'll just grab them all and can i make any more of these well i can make three more and some glass the way we want to hook these up is get these working with power in the first place which means i need this card on just so i can see where everything is and we have wires running right here and right here so i should be able to nope not there i will go underneath but for now i'll just do that so i can mark them so we need power in here power in there in there in there and then i'll just run it underneath like this and i should be able to run it parallel to this and perfect steam hatch is right there and those guys should be powered so why aren't you oh right the ethanol can't go anywhere so biodiesel goes void perfect and ethanol goes in the back i don't have any yellow fluid pipes on me you know what it's fine i can just do it this way perfect ethanol should be going in yes very very slowly and they're crafting and then i get ethylene and sulfuric acid so ethylene will be blue sulfuric acid will be orange hopefully i wonder if there's a way to set i doubt it is i doubt there's a way to set what color goes out but let's see if i oh my goodness that's perfect hopefully this one also makes ethylene you know what i'll connect them so they have to be forced there we go and that should bring out ethylene once it's finished yes and then we'll do sulfuric acid and they're locked so you can't accidentally put fluids in them and yeah these guys are both making sulfuric acid and ethylene now i do want to probably make small tanks for each one of these however i think for now we're probably fine just doing you know what yeah i'll make tanks because the sulfuric acid needs to be recursive. Sulfuric acid is the big one. So we'll just make a small tank. Let's do a 3x3 for now. Actually, no, we'll do a 3x7. There we go. Classic tank. And at this point, I've memorized this tank shape. Oh, I do want a output right here. Or a hatch, sorry. And then we'll want a hatch on the other side as well. But yeah, these are pretty easy to build at this point. Perfect. Oh, you're not valid. Aren't you valid? Oh, no, you're valid. Okay, never mind. I'm crazy. So we should be getting sulfuric acid in this guy. And then ethylene, I do want to put, maybe we'll just do a tank underground for now. Because ethylene is not going to be part of this process. And I don't want to avoid it, obviously. So I'll probably just do a tank underground. Something like that for now should be good. And you're not accepting. Why? Oh, there is a block in the middle. There's no block in the middle, <laughs> actually. So we'll do large tank. And now this has 10 bucks of ethylene. Perfect. So we'll just throw the ethylene underground. Pretend it doesn't exist for now. Sulfuric acid is the main one we need. The sulfuric acid itself is for the chromium manganese sulfuric acid. So this guy is going to get recrafted into a chemical reactor. So we'll do chemical reactor first. And I'm only doing one machine for each one of these for now. And then we'll see what we have to do in the future. Now this guy is going to be outputted directly into an electrolyzer. And this will be put back into the tank. So we'll do an input output on the back. And the manganese tiny dust will get put into a chest on top. So I'll grab a chest. And then we can set it up to our ME system eventually. So we'll do auto output on the top, auto output on the top, and then chest. Very simple. This guy will need to run into you. So out. And then this guy produces it. So we need to run him auto output fluids and items, auto output items. And we don't want fluids going up top. So we'll do it like this. And this guy needs to, oh, that's not what I want. Okay, yes. Out. And you're going to do in and out. Perfect. So sulfuric acid should go in here. It should also come out the back and go back into the tank once it's done. Now, if I power this thing, this entire thing should work. So I'll grab some manganese dust and we'll see if this works. All right. So hopper in front, chest and manganese. Now, with this in here and you're not getting power. Why aren't you getting power? Right. I need to make these advanced machine hulls to make them MV. Well, more crafting. It's only six machine hauls, so it shouldn't take too long. Should be enough? Yes, perfect. Okay, uh, run place. Down here. So, just right-click both these in, and now these should be working. Okay, manganese sulfuric acid looks good. Actually, there's no item output, so I don't even need that on. And perfect. So, I will lock these outputs so that that stays and we'll lock these so everything stays here so this should give us manganese tiny dust and then the sulfuric acid should go right back in here if everything goes to plan is this on output yes it is perfect looks good and we're getting manganese tiny dust now we just gotta get three more of those or sorry six more of those 
and we can make first manganese. So very simple setup, very, very simple. We just have the sulfuric acid be made from ethanol and then ethanol be made from LPG, LPG be made from crude oil, which is being made from fiery lid mix, which we don't have anymore because I'm not making aluminum drills anymore. Like I'll make them eventually once we can do them. However, at the moment, that is not the play. They are very expensive. However, I have found that these apparently do have an EMC value. I'm not sure why they don't show. Maybe you have to unlock EMC. I wasn't planning on using EMC in this pack, at least too much. However, for the drill specifically, I might use them just because I think making a factory is really cool. And I think resource gathering is the least fun part of having to make a factory. Like if you could automate the quarries themselves, that's cool. But obviously like duplicating items with uh, EMC isn't what I want to do. However, EMC with drills, if possible, might be the play. So once we get to an energy condenser and all that, we'll probably go ahead and do that. However, these are pretty far away. Stainless steel, we don't have. So who knows? But until then, we will be using the crafting recipe and, well, we have enough crude oil here to last us probably 20 years. So, not too worried about that. Nevertheless, we do have bio diesel. This guy is working and making ethanol and sulfuric acid. And ethylene, sorry. Now, the next thing we have to do is electrolyzers. So, I both need to electrolyze water and I need to electrolyze salt. So, salt I can grab from over here. I can just run a wire into this guy and then this one I need to electrolyze water so I will just make a quick water tank and then both of these will be fed into a chemical reactor to make hydrochloric acid so we'll do boom boom like so then chemical reactor to make hydrochloric acid I am missing a chemical reactor yep I'm definitely missing a chemical reactor because this is for hydrochloric acid and then I need to actually use the hydrochloric acid in another chemical reactor so I need Another chemical reactor, which means I need another advanced machine hall. Also need a water tank and all a bunch of other things. So I'm going to go craft those and then we can come back down and get this started. Okay, last chemical reactor and we have the advanced machine hall. Okay, now it's just a water tank, which I have one. Okay, good. And then we'll just grab our water buckets. So this guy's very simple. Bucket mode on, two water outputs. Tank in the middle, it gets water. And then we'll just connect it up to the top. Perfect. Very simple. This guy will electrolyze water. Now I do need to run cables into it. And I guess I could run it underneath right beside. Something like that. And then yeah, hydrogen and hydrogen and oxygen, sorry. And this guy should overclock eventually, so it shouldn't be a problem. However, I only want hydrogen. So hopefully goes into this pipe perfect we got hydrogen okay and then the oxygen will just void off like it'll automatically void if there's no way to put it so that's super nice we'll lock that so nothing else gets made in here and hydrogen will go into this chemical reactor anyways so it's perfect and then this guy will be made for salt so i do need item pipes and we'll take salt directly out it almost lines up i missed the mark ever so slightly however i'll just dig the floor up and then we'll get salt over there as well Perfect. And then we'll take this guy out with, well, why not? Ooh, that's not what I want to do. And perfect. We'll make hydrogen and chlorine at its, like, we don't need a tank for these guys specifically, right? Because we're only going to be making them as we need them. I made one for this so it could continuously process just because we have so much LPG and stuff. However, for these guys here, I'm not too worried about having overstock of hydrogen or chlorine because A, they're not like hugely important and we're going to be changing the way we get hydrogen and chlorine in the future both hydrogen will become hydrogen for mechanism which is an electrolytic separator these guys are so much better at doing its job as well as chlorine which we will get from chlorine for mechanism which is the brine thermal evaporation chamber so two things we'll make later with mechanism but for now we'll use these electrolyzers here now chemical reactor needs to go into why do i have a random basic machine hall okay i made the chemical reactor just making sure so once we get hydrochloric acid, it needs to go into a chemical reactor, right? So chemical reactor, we'll do go up like that, auto eject fluid. And yeah, this guy's going to take a while to actually get chlorine going. And I do need to put a drawer of some sort. I probably have some limited drawers left over. I should at least. Yes, we do. Perfect. So I'll do limited drawer. And you know what? I should do drawers for all of them because these are all going to be... Where did my limit? Oh, they're not barrels. They're barrels, right? And then upgrade. 
I have some gold upgrades, right? And I've also upgraded all these to diamonds, if you couldn't tell. Very simple, just redstone around, sorted up by diamonds. I have 12,000 of them, so it just gives us a bunch of extra space. Nevertheless, I will upgrade all of those down below. Stack upgrades, I don't have any, but these are easy to make as well. Just a bunch of stacks, wood, iron, gold, and then, yeah, we don't need diamond stack upgrades. That's a bit much, but we'll head down here. Like I said, or replace these because they only have one output each, so it's fine to do it this way. And then we can also see exactly what we have. Nope, that's not what I want to do, good sir. Oh, I do want to lock those, but I think it's fine for now. So auto output from the top like so. Sodium goes up there. And then you want to auto output your fluid. I also do need to recycle the outputs. So we'll do hydrogen and chloride. It gives chromium hydrochloric solution, which goes into the electrolyzer, obviously. And do it like that. And this means I need the cool, what's this called? Chromium, 126, not too bad. Oh, I do want my locking tool, nice. Just so I can lock these barrels. Then we'll grab some manganese, throw it in there. Chromium, throw it in there. And that should be good. Now this guy will start making this once it has 9,000, I believe. Yeah, it's 9,000, which will get pushed up top, electrolyzed, separated, and hydrogen chlorine will go back down below. So I need two outputs. One of them being hydrogen, so that's fine. No, I want you to output only. Yeah, I knew that was going to happen. Like so. Autumn output top, like that. Perfect. Now, I also need to output the chlorine, which is easy enough. Oh, I say that and I mess it up. Output and input like so. Nice. So that means all of our chlorine and all that should be recycled very easily, which means we shouldn't run out of chlorine anytime soon. Also, this guy will have excess hydrogen, so mainly the hydrogen will be voided, but that's not an issue. We'll lock all these recipes, and that'll lock once it enters. However, we're 6,000 of 9,000, so we'll come back once that's done, and I can craft this guy up if I want to. So shift K. Oh, can you not K that? I guess not. Well, we'll craft it ourselves, like so. And for the quest, you do get 16 extra, so that's nice. Our last piece of meatloaf. I do need to get pigs online soon, just because... There is a f upgrade I want to do to my Steve's cart, which means I want to have it as creative mode so I can do it. Also makes it the fuel cost zero pretty much. So we do want the creative mode upgrade on our thing so we can assemble our machine instantly. However, that means I do need to make prismarine crystals, which are pretty easy. I just got to throw nether quartz in front of our atomic reconstructor. The only one that's a pain, well, it's not really a pain, is the epic bacon here. I do need a force craft bacon, which is pretty easy to get. You just need uh, pork chops in a grinder, or I believe force shears should work as well. You just use force shears on a pig and you get bacon from it. However, I do need force gems for this, which means I need to either find power ore by turning deep throck into deep throck or emerald ore into that, which should be pretty easy. I just do deep throck with a lens of the miner, which is black quartz. So yeah, we'll do this eventually and get four shears so we can get bacon. But yeah, I do want to side quest and get a creative upgrade. It also means we get some aluminum gears on the side as well. Other than that, butadine, uh, synthetic rubber, I have so much of, I can easily do that. Palace crystal, which is just lapis, Eternus feel, and regalium, we just have to go mining in the undergarden for, which isn't too bad. Or we turn deep throck with weight of 100 in the lens of the miner too. So either of those are possible, very easy. Wither skeleton skulls will be a bit harder as we do need blaze gold swords in a quarry, which we don't have set up at the moment. This would be pretty easy to do. The creative lava tank, pretty nice. Diamond, diamantine crystals, pretty good as well. This, I just have to craft these, which is nice. Gives us transistors and aluminum plates. I've never held 32. The max I've held is nine, apparently, because it takes so long to craft them. Polyethylene will be nice. We can submit that. Clay chicken, I have to do chickens, I guess. Blaze gold, we can do blaze gold pretty easily. This gives us a creative compressed block, which is nice. And then we get to titanium, which will give us titanium drills. So we'll definitely do this once that time comes to pass. However, we can't make titanium yet without canthal, which is actually pretty close. That's what we're doing today. So we'll replace that with canthal soon. However, this should be done, correct? It's at 6,000. Why is it at 6,000? Oh, you know what? I locked the output, so it couldn't actually make it. Of course I did. There we go. Now it's locked to hydrochloric acid. And this would also be bad if I locked this. There we go. Now it's crafting. Yeah, I, I messed that up. That was on me. Because now the efficiency's gone on that one as well. However, we're finally making chromium tiny dust. And these guys will recycle. 
most of the fluid back, which is nice. And then it should be able to start actively going a lot faster. Perfect. We're all set up down here. Now it's just a waiting game. Once that's done, we'll be back and we can start crafting stainless steel. And then the MV questline should be pretty much done. There's not much else I want to do in the MV age other than getting our canthal. And then we can start making digital circuit boards with assemblers and stuff. And we already have the ethylene. We just will need another chemical reactor. And we already have a chemical reactor upstairs anyway. So this should be pretty easy to make. So we'll be back once this guy crafts up way more than three. And this guy's done with all 53 or however many is left in there. All right, so I did make a few adjustments to this guy, not very many. However, I have done a few priority shifting over here. I have a fluid trash can. This both does oxygen, it does sulfuric acid, and it does yeah, hydrogen. But the hydrogen and chlorine are both on low priority, and it is on high priority 10 for both of these. So anything that comes out of here will automatically try to be pushed into here and if it can't fit it will automatically be pushed into the trash can that is just because i'm running over access because this guy just can't keep up the output and the input so it'd be nice it'd be nicer to have a buffer tank however i'm not too concerned about it for now once again not a permanent solution we're going to be changing the way we get hydrogen and chlorine anyways and at that point those will be such high like given resources that i'm not going to be needing them on access like we'll be using mechanism and we'll have so much of them that it's not too big of a deal but yeah for now it's just doing this and they're going pretty well i have 10,000 or sorry not 10,000 1,000 up there 10,000 would be crazy and i have 1,400 over here so i'm just going to grab all of these and we should be good to go i also went ahead and made the 19 frost proof casings just a bunch of aluminum for these guys it's aluminum plates surrounded by gear just made those up and we have everything to make the vacuum freezer i went ahead and cracked all of that up and that means the quest gives us everything else we need which is nice so we have the 23 casings and we have the fluid output fluid output or item output fluid output input and input and now we can make our first canthal ingot which is stainless steel chromium dust and aluminum dust once again this is very weird how it does this stainless steel should be the first thing not this but obviously you can't make stainless steel ingots but there should be stainless steel dust here in the quest book but we'll just grab some nickel i'll throw it in a pulverizer no that's my mixer that's my thing master there we go we'll pop master that i am making some more chromium dust i just start switched it over from ruby or redstone to ruby so this will make us a bunch more chromium because chromium is used more than the manganese is however grab that out decent amount of chromium dust and then we also do get more from the quest and then manganese get a decent amount as well so i need the manganese let's grab it all i need chromium i need iron dust i should have iron dust oh i guess i did use it all on the whatchamacallit that's right i did use it all to do the other thing okay i mean that's fine I should have some over here. What am I doing that for? I have it all over here. There we go. I knew I had iron dust. I was very confused why I didn't have the iron dust, but that's why. And then the mixer here, I can remove this, unlock it, and we're good to go on that front. So this, 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 and this should stop making invar. Now it should make stainless steel. There we go. Okay, perfect. And that makes it pretty fast. Wow. Okay. Even just with a single basic upgrade, that makes it decently fast. And I will grab more invar, do something like that. And I'll just throw iron dust up there for now. Perfect. And now we're getting stainless steel, which isn't a quest, unfortunately. And then Canthal is simply stainless steel, chromium, and aluminum. So like I said, the chromium the chromium is very used. However, the aluminum, not so much. I shouldn't have done that. I do need to switch this out. <laughs> so chromium, stainless steel, and what was the other one? Aluminum. And I have aluminum dust saved, I believe. Yes, I saved it as tiny dust, so it wouldn't get it exported. Perfect. And that'll make us Canthal. I don't know how many gives. I'll give six. Not, not too bad. Not too bad. And with this, we just throw it in the EBF simply and we get Canthal hot ingots. So I'll chuck that in there. That's not what I meant to chuck in there. And that should start working immediately. Awesome. You know what? I will set that as one of the exports for this guy. Now for this, I also do get extra chromium. So I will take that. And then here we just need to vacuum freeze it. So this will most likely burn our hands as soon as we pick it up. Oh, it's going into the system. Right. So if I go Canthal, ooh, why aren't you being created? Is it doing aluminum instead? Oh, it's probably doing aluminum instead. Now it's only Canthal in there. So it should only do Canthal now. Yeah, okay, that makes more sense. It's taken a while to do the Canthal. So with the Canthal, once we get it, I believe we get 32. Oh no, we get Canthal cables. Okay, so one one gives cables. So we got to set up our vacuum freezer then, which is pretty simple. I will set it up down beside our machines. I probably, yeah, because all of our MV machines are downstairs anyways. And I will move the EBF down there eventually. 
However, I do need a electrum wire. Ooh, we are running low on electrum wires. Did I make some more? I probably should have. And if I didn't, that's bad. Ooh, I'm out of electrum wires. Or cables, sorry. Are there any other MV cables? Ooh, Cooper Nickel. Perfect. I might be able to connect these. I actually don't know. It's not where I want to go. Can I connect these? No, I cannot. I mean, it makes sense you can't. But that's unfortunate so we'll just make some more electrum not too big of a deal but for now we'll just hop down here and i will throw the furnace in the wall here i guess i mean i think this is fine over here Ooh, something like this and i will need to break back here and get access to our back tunnel this side there's some bubbling going on back here and i think it's the dz yeah it's the liquid compressors perfect okay so i'll throw the vacuum freezer just in here this should be the same as greg tech i don't imagine it wouldn't be I, oh, sorry, I can't imagine it would be the same as Greg Tech, so it is a 3x3x3 three by three by three cube, and that should complete. Or maybe it's... I, I, they're not hollow. I think it just might need the casing, that's why. So it does give us an MV energy hatch, which is super nice. It also gives us the input hatches, which I will want on the front. Oh, this is a 4x3 structure. Okay, interesting. So I'll do fluid output on the back for now. I don't have any fluids to use in this thing at the moment. It'll do fluid input in the back. And yeah, we're, we don't have enough blastproof casings or uh, frostproof scrapings, sure, sure I say. These are really easy to make, so it's not that big of a deal. The quest does say, when you open this, all right, it gives you eight and you have to make 19, so that's 27. However, when you click on this, it requires 33, which is the correct number, obviously. However, it just doesn't give you the enough for the quest, which is weird. I'll just grab six more. I'm probably going to, I'm going to be making more furnace or freezers anyway, so... It's not that big of a deal, but let's complete this for now. And this should be active, yeah. So I'll just do item output and input on the front. Very simple. Now I'll go grab the canthal, which should be done, or some of it should be done at least. However, I'm probably gonna burn my hands, but that's fine. Nope, we're not burning our hands. Okay, once again, small things like this just make Greg Tech a better mod. Now I do like this mod, don't get me wrong, but small things like that, it's, it's the small things. And some people might find hotting is annoying. I think it's cool. I think it's very like useful that hotting gets burn you because well that just makes sense. If you're making a realistic pack, you shouldn't be able to just pick up ingots that are boiling hot in your hands, you know? Anyways, gotta make wires out of these guys and then we can start hooking everything up. And then we just take the electrum wire from up above. Actually no, we'll just run it above these guys like this. Oh and I have gone ahead and turned these guys off. I mean you probably saw the lever when we walked by. However, these guys are just automatically switched on and off so that they don't burn diesel constantly and so they don't explode because i did have an issue where they were exploding because well we just had too much power <laughs> however now we have mv energy going in should be able to chuck the canthal in the input and it should be working awesome so we should grab our first canthal ingot and then get some wires from it and then these are the same as before it is simply eight wires in a circle will give you a single canthal coil and it wants eight of those so that's pretty easy we just wire mill can't all. and these do work in the steam machines luckily so should be pretty easy to do so i'll let those run let these guys keep running i'm making some more stainless steel while i'm at it and then we'll be back once everything's done and we'll see where the episode leads and that there should be the last canthal coil which means quest complete we get the extra 16 and i believe this guy actually has to run at mv it does require 32 use per tick. It doesn't say it needs to run at MV. However, I should run this guy at MV in all honesty. But for now, we'll say screw it. And I will take down this Cooper Nickel. There we go. And now it's on Canthal. And should be good to go. I will throw all my stainless steel dust in there. And say no more aluminum going in for now. I'll throw stainless steel in there. I'm pretty sure that's the aluminum still processing. Yeah, because there's no way stainless steel would be that fast. Like, yeah, there's no way. <laughs> okay, you know what? That's actually not... That was actually our stainless steel. That's not bad processing speed, I will say. Cool. And we need to smelt it. Yeah, we need to freeze it. Oh, wrong way. I want to go down to the basement. And is it done? No, it's still going. It only has nine left. Well, we will wait. Not a big deal. And yeah, we have plenty of canthal, so I can make a few electric glass furnaces, which is really nice. And once again, these guys do share sides, so we can do four uh, beside each other, or sorry, four together. And then yeah, that will be our setup, and we'll have four EBFs running, because that's the max size EBF you can take. And then we can make the digital circuit here, which is aluminum cables, silicon, electronic circuit boards, and then polyethylene. So we do need a chemical reactor with the ethylene. However, I will just grab a tank 
like so. I have plenty of them and I will grab a pipe and then we'll just pipe it out of the one down here. Once again, run area. I don't know if I actually have a hatch to pop it out of, so I will grab an extra hatch and pop down here. I really do need to eat. However, I completely ran out of meatloaf and I haven't been asked to get any more. Pull is this guy. Okay, it's just filling up because it's a gas, so it's upside down. But yeah, I never added an extra hatch onto this guy. So what I will do is just come around the back, which is fine actually, and just pump it out into this guy. Perfect. And wrench mode. Nice. Currently making non-dope silicon plates, but they can wait. That's not what I want to do. Does that automatically go in? It does. Perfect. So ethylene, and then what did we need in this? It's just chromium dust. Perfect. And we should have plenty of that down here. 612. Grab a stack. So once those dope silicon plates are done, that will run, and we should be good. Now there should be anything else I need to do. I have everything for the digital circuit board, which is silicon battery, electronic circuit, aluminum cable, and stainless steel plates. And then I should have everything here. I've laid them out actually on my side here. I need a knot gate, which are the OP amps. Once we have the silicon plates, we can make them. These guys are the OR gates. Once again, just some more of the OP amps. And the AND gate, once again, just more OP amps with a bunch of resistors, aluminum cables, or aluminum wires, sorry. And yeah, these are pretty easy to make. It's just transistors and diodes. The only thing that I need for these circuits are the digital circuit boards. And then obviously you need four electronic circuits, which means you need 16 analog circuits per one, which is a lot. So each digital circuit board requires 16 of the original circuit boards, which I'm small tangent. The way Greg Tech works is you have multiple circuits for each tier. And the better you get at processing and the better resources you have, the better lowest tier circuit, or sorry, the highest tier of that age circuit you can make. So the highest tier LV circuit is much better than the, or it's a more item efficient than the original circuit, but it requires better processing and better, some better ingredients, but they're easier to make. In this case, I still have to be making 16 of the original circuit each time I want to make a HB circuit. I need 16 other original ones to make one of these. And that means I still have to use the exact same recipe. There's not a better recipe. It's whether I craft it or put it in an assembler, it's always going to be the same recipe, which I find dumb. Now, the recipe is not hard by any means, so it's not that big of a deal, but there should be better recipes. But I get it. Obviously, it, this isn't based off Greg Tech 5 and, you know, still, I don't know. It's simpler for sure, but it is one annoyance I have. I shouldn't need 16 and then I assume I need, yeah, I'll need 64 to make a single processing unit. And then for these, I need, what, 256 of the original circuit to make a single quantum circuit. Does it go any higher? I don't think it does. Yeah. So I need 256 original circuits to make one of these, just a single one of these. I need 256 of the original circuits. And eventually, yeah, we have so much copper in the game. Like this just requires copper, gold, and rubber. I'm pretty sure that's it in gold. Copper, rubber, gold, and coal. So it's they're not hard to make. I just think that's annoying. I think there should be better recipes. Hand it over. We'll be back once everything's done crafting and then we can start making our first HV circuit. We should have enough stainless steel in here. Yeah, we have over a stack and a half, or two, almost two and a half stacks actually. Invar with slot locking. Nice, nice quest. So I'm going to throw a stack into the compressor. No, we'll do a stack and a half. That should compress. Nice. Cool. That also gives us extra 16 hot steel ingots, not cooked steel ingots for some reason but our thing should still be going nicely over here. Yeah, awesome. So this means we do need the polyethylene, which I have been making, correct? Oh no, I might've forgotten. No, I haven't. Okay, yes, we have polyethylene, perfect. So that needs to go into a assembler, yes. So what I'll do is I'll take my assembler from here and make it MV. So we do need a two NOT gates. We need a single OR gate and we need a single AND gate. And then we should be able to make our first digital circuit. There we go, guys. Look at that. There's no quest for it, but we do have our first silicon, or sorry, our first digital circuit online, which is super, super cool. I'm not gonna worry too much about this age just quite yet. We don't have much that we can do with the HV age at the moment. Alrighty, guys, I'm gonna wrap up today's episode there. We got our stainless steel production online and fully automated, well, mostly automated, and we got our first HV circuit, which will help us in later processes, but for now, we're not gonna worry too much about the HV age. We're gonna finish off here in the MV age in the next episode, get all of our machines upgraded, and make sure all of our automation is up to snuff, and then we can move on to the HV age, hopefully, really easily. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, leave a like on the video. It means a lot. If you don't want to miss any future uploads or any other uploads from me in the series, hit that subscribe button. 
And if you learned something or want to teach me something about this mod pack or the mods I'm using, leave it in the comments below. I do read them all and I do appreciate it. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye-bye.